Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Book Talks with Yo. My name is Ioana and today I'm sharing with you 7 classic books that I want to read. Some time ago I made a video talking about my top 10 favorite classic books and I mentioned that there are still a lot that I just haven't read. So today I decided to share 7 of those books that I really want to read but haven't yet done so. So without further ado, let's just get into the video and talk about classics. The first book on this list is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I really like Austen's writing, so this book has been in my TBR for quite some time. And I have a physical copy of it, so I really have no excuse than to just pick it up soon. If you aren't familiar with the story, we follow those two sisters, Marianne and Eleanor Dashwood, who are complete opposites. We have Marianne, who is, she wears her heart on her sleeve and she tends to be rather naive towards the world. Uh, we have her falling in love with the very unsuitable John Willoughby, completely ignoring her sister's warnings to be more sensible about the matter. And on the other hand, we have her elder sister, Eleanor, who is the, the complete embodiment of sense towards the, the social conventions and rules. But she's very clear-headed and very grounded, but she's affectionate in the same time as well. And we have her falling in love with someone else as well, but she's very secretive about the whole matter and doesn't share it with even with her closest ones, even with her sister. What both heroines should learn in this novel is that sense and sensibility shouldn't exist separately and should have some balance between them. I believe that Jane Austen has written another great novel and I think that this one will hint at her critique of the so-called sensibility novels, which were very popular at the 18th century, so I'm excited to see what she has done there. The next book on this list is Anna Karenina by Lev Tolstoy or Leo Tolstoy. This is a Russian classic set in late 19th century Russia and we follow the story of Anna who is a sophisticated and free-spirited woman who decides to leave her husband who is some important Russian imperial minister for an affair she has with the dashling uh, officer Count Alexei Kirillovich Vronsky. This, of course, creates some scandal and some serious shock amongst the elite classes of St. Petersburg, so the young lovers are forced to run to Italy. This pretty much sums up all I know about the novel, but I actually started reading it a few years ago, but something came up and I stopped somewhere at the beginning, so I should really start it again from the beginning because I don't remember almost anything. Uh, it's quite intimidating, no gonna lie, it's, it's kind of long. I, I think it's divided in eight parts, so that's quite quite some a heavy book, but I'm still interested to read it. I still want to, I'm, I'm hoping at least, I'm hoping to read it in 2021. As well as that, I know that earlier this year, I think it was in March, there, there was a book that came out, it was Anna K by Jenny Lee, and I know that it's loosely inspired by this classic, so I want to read the original first, like to read the classic first and then read the book by Jane Lee. So I think that would be some further motivation for me to really actually and finally read this classic in 2021. The third one is To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I know that this book is set in the Isle of Skye, Scotland, which pretty much is enough to make me want to pick it up. But I also know that we follow the story of the serene Mrs. Ramsay her tragical yet absurd husband, Mr. Ramsey, and their eight children and some guests as they are on a holiday in the Isle of Skye at their house. I think it's set sometime before the First World War, but I'm not really sure about this. We also find out that there is a, a lighthouse across the bay from the house they're in, and one of the children, the six-year-old James, really wants to go to that lighthouse, and his mother promises him that the following day, if the weather is nice, they will go. But his father just tells him that, no, the weather is about to be foul. And this makes James think that his father resents him and actually enjoys spoiling the fun of him and the other children. 
I know that Virginia Woolf explores the tensions and just the relationships of family life and the differences between men and women in her novel. And I've also heard amazing things about her beautiful, poetic and rhythmic writing style. So I'm excited to give that one a go. Next one is Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. I'm having a really, really hard time pronouncing the name of this book, but yeah. I don't know awful lot about the plot and the premise of the story, but I do know that we follow the story of our main heroine, who is Tess Durberfield, uh, who is sent by her impoverished family to make an appeal to a nearby wealthy family who bear the ancestral name Durberville. So it's really close to her name, but it's kind of different. There she's, let's say, seduced by one of the boys in this family, whose name is Alec. And she secretly bears his child, who is called Sorrow. And then we have another moment in her future when Tess marries uh, another gentleman. But he actually leaves her on their wedding night when he finds out about her past. I know that this is a, a very vague, very vague description of the whole story. But I didn't really want to check more information because I don't want to spoil myself or spoil any of you if you haven't read it as well. So yeah, I'm hoping that once I read it, I will be able to tell you more about it. Next one is Middle March by George Eliot. This novel is subtitled A Study of Provincial Life and is claimed by many critics, both Eliot contemporaries and critics in nowadays, that this is one of the greatest English novels of all time. So this is very promising. And I know that it's set in the years leading up to the first reform bill of 1832. And I know that it also explores almost every aspect of modern life. We have art and science, we have politics, we have the self and different human relationships, we have society and etc. I also know that there is this huge cast of characters who are all flawed in some way, but yet they're very lovable and you can easily relate to them. I also know that they have to learn some valuable lessons throughout the story and we have some that manage to learn those lessons and find temporary happiness. We have others who are incapable or refuse to learn those lessons and prefer to just blame others for their <clears throat> resentful existence. And we have other characters who are incapable of learning those uh, lessons or are, have learned those lessons but are incapable of changing their ways because of past decisions they've made. This is again very vague but I don't want to spoil anything. And I know that we have this uh, particular character, Dorothea, who everyone ends up loving and relating to so I really want to find out why and I want to experience this one-of-a-kind English novel. Next one is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. This is another one I don't really know awful lot about, but I've been meaning to pick it up even before I started reading classics. I know that it tells the story of this French doctor, Manetti, who has been in prison for 18 years in Paris, and after he's released, he goes to live with his daughter Lucy in London, whom he had never met before, he had never met his daughter before. And we also follow the stories of those two men, one of them is an exiled French aristocrat called Charles Darney and the other one is an English word called Sidney Carton. Their lives actually intertwine because of their love towards Lucy. I also know that this novel is set during the time of the French Revolution and the so-called Reign of Terror, which is something we've been talking a lot about in my literature lectures, so this is another reason that I really want to pick that one up. Now that I think about it, I might pick it up this winter, but knowing myself, I there is a, a high chance of me telling you the same thing that time next year. So yeah, we'll see. I never know. And last but not least is Mrs. Dalloway, again by Virginia Woolf. This is actually said to be one of Woolf's best novels, and I know that it encompasses just a single day. The whole story takes place in one day in this woman's life. Her name is Mrs. Clarissa Dalloway, and she's an upper-class housewife. At the beginning of the novel, we have her preoccupied with last-minute preparations and details of a party she's hosting that evening, and during the story, during the novel, as she's 
just doing some tasks around the house, some last minute tasks and walking around this London neighborhood, she's flooded with all those flashbacks from her past and from times far away gone and certain people from her past as well, which all makes her just re-examine all the choices she has done so far that have made her the person she is right now and had brought her to where she is. She also starts looking ahead of the time of growing old and I really don't need to know more about this story because I trust that Virginia Woolf has created another brilliant novel. So that pretty much wraps up my seven classics I want to read. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my new videos. Please let me know down in the comments if you've read any of those classics and what are your thoughts on them. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you all next time. Until then, have a smiley week. Bye!